What is going on, everyone? Welcome back into the 415ers podcast three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Odyssey Sports Podcast Network, 95.7 The Game. It is Evan Giddings. It is Mark Grandy. Mark, how you feeling after a 13-0 shutout for the 49ers of the New Orleans Saints? The Niners, with some help from the Las Vegas Raiders, are now in first place in the NFC West. They have not allowed a single point in the last six quarters, as you can see there for those of our viewers on YouTube. They pitched their fourth second half shutout, and they have a four-game winning streak for the first time since 2019. What's happening? Uh, I'm doing well, Evan. Yeah, all in all, uh, a good day for the 49ers. You mentioned the help that they got up in the Pacific Northwest from the Raiders. That's good news, obviously. Kind of a weird game for the 49ers in Santa Clara. They score 13 points, but they win. The defense pitches, pitches a shutout. You mentioned all those statistics for the defense. They've been absolutely incredible. But all in all, a relatively frustrating day offensively. There are some injuries to talk about on the offensive side of the ball as well. But as you mentioned, all in all, a very positive day for the San Francisco 49ers. They now have a game lead in the division. They've won four in a row. They're playing their best ball, you know, team-wide over the last month. Uh, things are looking up for the 49ers, but still, just a kind of a strange game overall. The offensive issues, we'll dive into it, but the defense, they stole the show once again. They were just incredible. Yeah, they, no, they did. And I do think there are, on both sides of the football, maybe a little bit of um, statistics not pointing to absolute truths on both sides. And we'll get into the offense in a sec, but, you know, this was a 49ers defense that, I mean, took took care of an offense that is inferior. I think the Saints defense, as we kind of talked about in the preview episode, showed some signs of life. But defensively, they force two fumbles. Uh, they, I believe they had forced just one entering the game. Fred Warner starts it off on the first drive against Alvin Kamara. And then Talano Hufanga down the stretch in the fourth quarter forces a fumble at the goal line, which Dre Green, Greenlaw recovers. That's huge. So against a team in the Saints, Mark, that had one of the worst turnover differentials in the league at negative 12. They are a positive in that category. And I think that is probably the biggest takeaway for me on defense is they were opportunistic, which has been one area they have not necessarily been as much this season. I know they haven't allowed a lot of points. They haven't allowed a lot of yards, but they haven't gotten the takeaways and kind of the big plays like the lone sack of the game, uh, which came in the fourth quarter for Nick Bosa down inside the 20 yard line. That was a, a, a gotta have it type play from your playmaker. And we saw it today from Hufanga. We saw it from Fred Warner. We saw it from Bosa. Uh, those are my biggest takeaways from the defense. Yeah, I think you, you look at, you know, a shutout and you might expect, you know, the opposing team to, to only get 170 yards of offense, getting just maybe two and a half yards per play. That That's sort of the, the numbers that you might expect. Uh, when the team doesn't put up any points. But the interesting thing is the Saints actually were able to move the ball a, a decent amount. The 49ers only outgained New Orleans by 57 yards. It's not a gigantic number considering the fact that New Orleans didn't score. The Saints, 260 yards. They averaged just under five yards per play, which, believe it or not, was more than the Niners averaged per play. The reason the Niners had more yards and ultimately scored more points is because they had the ball longer and they were able to capitalize a couple of times when they got down into the red zone. But those yards kind of don't equal the number of points scored. And that's kind of been the case. We talked about it on, a, on our Friday episode. The, the Saints haven't been the opportunistic team, both offensively and defensively, that they've needed to be. And it's a big reason why they're 4-8. and eight. But they had multiple drives stall out in the red zone. You mentioned the force fumble on the goal line by Hufunga, recovered by Jerry Greenlaw. They had a missed field goal as well. And then there were kind of game situations where they were down two scores, two touchdown scores. And instead of settling for a field goal to make it a 10-point game, it was worth it to go forward on fourth and short. And they didn't convert. And that's a reason why they didn't score any points. So the defense, obviously incredible. But to your point, uh, probably not as incredibly dominant as you might expect for a shutout, but still, anytime you can put up zero points, uh, you can allow zero points uh, for the opposing offense. It's it's a gigantic win, and it doesn't happen all that often. The last time the Saints were held scoreless in a game 
the final week of the 2001 season. That was also against the 49ers, snapping a, a streak of, oh, what's the number? Over 300 games, 332 games, uh, the Saints uh, between shutouts for their offense. So an incredible number there for the 49ers defense. But but again, the, the Saints were able to move the ball a little bit, but the Niners just played great defense when it when it mattered down in the red zone. Yeah, and the, the anomaly stat that I saw was, in fact, I believe the Saints' last four shutouts have come against the 49ers. Wow. Which is which is pretty crazy. <laughs> um, the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. <laughs> but, no, I, I do think, in addition to also the missed field goal as well as the two fumbles, the Saints dropped, like, I, I, the unofficial count that I had, Mark, was about eight. They dropped, like, eight passes. Mm. Um, I know one of them was kind of a big one earlier in the game that Kyle Shanahan certainly gets credit for challenging uh, Chris Olave down near the goal line. Um, you're, I'm sorry, your, your boy, Juwan Johnson from the university of Oregon was uh, <laughs> had, had hands of steel and not in a good way, uh, especially inside the goal line. He dropped a touchdown. Uh, he dropped what would have been a series extending play. If not for the Nick Bosa roughing the passer penalty on a fourth and one in the second half, uh, Juwan Johnson was let off the hook for that one. Yeah, if like, you started him in your fantasy lineups, uh, I apologize. Two targets, no catches. I did, but the uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but the fact of the matter is, no, you're right. Like like the defense was aided by the Saints, and this has honestly been New Orleans' undoing all season. Now, this is where I do think there is some credit that does it should be deserved by the 49ers. And Fred Warner kind of alluded to it a little bit in the post game, but he had noticed that Alvin Kamara had, you know, kind of had had happy hands, so to speak, had been coughing up the football earlier in games. That would be something that was going to be on his mind entering the game. So, I mean, whether or not you on every single player trying to strip the ball or not, uh, Fred Warner took advantage of that on the first drive. Then that's something that leaks into the running back's mind later in the game near the goal line where he's trying to make a play. He kind of got caught in that in-between Kamara did of trying to extend for the goal line near the one, but also trying to to kind of tuck it away. Greenlaw held him up in time for Ufanga to get it. I think there were some side effects of, of one, how physical the Niners were on defense, but also how well they were playing. When you're a Saints offense that has has kind of struggled to put up points at time this at times this year. They're definitely a defense first, offense second type team. When you drop the first pass, you drop a big play. That sort of creeps into your mind when you are playing against the number one defense in the NFL and thinking to yourself, man, we might not have any, many more of these chances. And like you said, they did because they moved the ball down the field in between the 20s specifically. But when you're always in the back of your mind thinking, man, I don't, this might be the last chance we get, it makes it all that much tougher. And the ball seems to be a little more slippery, which is something we saw today. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. Um, there's certainly in the mind of Alvin Kamara. And, and you know, that's also kind of just the MO of the 49ers defense. Uh, we talk a lot about forcing turnovers and how the Saints haven't been able to do that. The Niners are doing that more often this year than they have in the past. And I think, uh, I mean, Talanoa Hufunga had a fantastic start to the season. Maybe kind of come back to earth a little bit over the last month, despite the fact that this is when the team has been playing its best ball. Uh, and maybe it's because the team is getting healthier. Jimmy Ward is playing now, and you don't need Talanoa Hufunga to do as much. But uh, I mean, he is just a ball hawk. He's everywhere around the football. And the hit that he laid on Alvin Kamara at the goal line, I think 95% of players in the NFL are fumbling when they get hit like that. I mean, it was just the perfectly placed hit. It was legal. It wasn't targeting. It wasn't helmet to helmet. He got his shoulder right on the football, popped it up into the air. Dre Greenlaw ultimately recovers. Uh Talano Hufunga deserves a shout out for that play and that play alone, even if it was the only play he made in the entire game. Because despite the fact that, you know, it was a, a 13 nothing win, the Niners win by double digits, the Saints threatened to get to score and make it a one possession game, but they never did. I mean, you don't make that play. The Saints get in the end zone on the next play, potentially. Maybe Kamara drags a couple of defenders in on that play alone. And suddenly, you're just one play away from losing the game. So Talano Hufanga deserves a gigantic shout-out because he was incredible on that play. 
just the pinpoint accuracy of his hit, popping that ball free, really difficult to do to a moving target, despite the fact that Camaro was slowed. Um, but still, Talano Hufunga has remarkable ball skills uh, for a safety and not just catching the ball, but it's it's placing hits and knocking balls free. He's making a habit of doing it, and it was good to see it once again. Yeah, no, Hufunga was fantastic. To me, Fred Warner was the star on defense today. Sure. Uh, he was all over the field. He literally did a bit of everything. He got out of the backfield when D'Amico Ryans dialed up the blitz in the second half. He had a quarterback hit. He had two passes defended. Um, you know, I, I know he didn't have as many tackles maybe as Hufanga did, but to me, he was he was just absolutely everywhere today. And Fred Warner also, of course, forced the fumble early in the game on Camara. Um, he was his presence was felt today, and th and that's where the 49ers, to me, can rely on their defense a bit. Um, they they impose their will on games, like they they absolutely do, and they force you. Also, one of the reasons why they haven't allowed a point in the last six quarters, one of the reasons they haven't allowed a point in the last four second halves, is because they force you into tough situations where you have to go for it against them. Now, it helps that, of course, they're playing with a lead, which which their offense, to give them credit, even though only 13 points, three in the second half is not all that much. They did give them a lead to play with. The Saints were in situations where uh, even if they wanted to take the points, it wouldn't have been a wise decision. Like you're kicking field goals when you need touchdowns. And there's a lot of those scenarios to look at over the last four weeks, which is a reason why the point totals against the 49ers have been suppressed. One of the reasons why you know, on fourth downs, other teams have not been as successful is because they put you in situations in which they want much in the way that a basketball team, you know, imposes its pace on an opposing team. The defense for the 49ers does that to offenses in a way that we just don't simply see all that often in an NFL nowadays in which it is moving the ball down the field, explosive plays, creativity. You don't see a whole lot of that against the 49ers because you just you just can't do it. Yeah, no, you, you can't. I mean, you have to, when, when you're playing against a team like the 49ers, who are so incredibly stingy defensively, uh, when you get an opportunity to score, uh, you get those opportunities so, you know, relatively few times that you need to take advantage and score six points when you do have the opportunity. So even if the 49ers on the other side of the ball aren't putting up 38 points like they did uh, you know, last week on Monday against the Cardinals in Mexico City, which they didn't do this time around, only scoring 13 points and struggling on offense in their own right, specifically in the second half. Even when the Niners offense isn't lighting things up, this is a defense that is dominant enough that is forcing other teams to make tough decisions and go for it on fourth down instead of taking three points. You might that might not make a ton of sense logically because generally you think, all right, field goals aren't going to do it in this game because we're playing Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to score 30-plus points today because that's who they are. But when you have an elite defense like the 49ers and you're going up against that, the logic is still there. That same logic applies because your chances are just so limited. You need to score on those chances you get because you're not sure if you're going to get another chance. And that's why the Saints and other teams have been forced into going forward on fourth downs in field goal range because they know that this might be one of the only chances they get to score all game long. So the Niners defense, as a result of how stingy they've been, are forcing other offenses into making tough decisions, do or die plays on fourth downs in second halves, and the Niners are good enough to get stops on those fourth downs. And that's why... As you mentioned, six straight quarters without allowing a point. It's over 94 minutes of game time since their last point allowed. They haven't uh, allowed a point in the second half in four straight games. They will finish November without allowing a second half point. Just remarkable numbers for the 49ers. And uh, you got to, you know, hats off to the defense. Everyone on the defense played great. And it's still not a fully healthy unit which is pretty incredible to, to say. It looks like Eric Armstead is, is working back towards playing, which will be a gigantic plus. But the Niners defense just checking boxes every single week. It, it's kind of getting uh, kind of getting repetitive at this point. They've played so well over the last month. 